Schön heute. Liebe Freunde, heute Abend bei uns zu Gast im Rockpalast, John Watts. Hallo John. Hallo Ben. Right, looking back to 82, which is now over 30 years ago, when you went on to Rock Palast, were you aware of the big deal that it is in uh, European television? Yeah, I was, because it had been talked about throughout the, you know, between sort of 79 and 81. Yeah, I've seen it. Right, so you you hadn't got on there with your uh, with your band Fisher Z, but uh, as soon as you went solo, they uh, they came knocking, did they? But I think you know, I can't remember exactly. I, I, I think that I, mean, I was aware of it. There was all sorts of different rock balance events, but I think that uh, the the whole uh, the original, first year of Fisher Z stuff was such a lightning thingy. It all happened so quickly. So has Germany been a good market for you over the years? Yeah, Germany's always been very friendly with me. I think I think it's because we joke about it. Cause it's <laughs> <was German. laughs> Excellent. Um, I mean, some would say perhaps that you, uh, you, you, you're bigger in in Europe than you are in your own country. Would that be fair to say? And if so, why? In the, what do you mean? In the, in the originally, way back then, or now? Well, over your career, you've been particularly successful in in Europe, I think, haven't you? Oh yeah, and all the all the, all the initial Fish Z records were particularly successful in Europe because I dealt with you know, European political issues rather than um, you know the most of the punk bands were dealing they were either, either anti-Thatcher or they were based with Br British you know UK only issues and I think people apart from the music and the fact it was melodic in the in the aftermath of um, sort of punk and new wave it was energetic music that was very melodic and that, that meant that it communicated beyond language and second as a subject matter I dealt with it was very much taken to the hearts of people especially you know Germany and Finland Portugal Spain all over the place John Watts, but I mean, many would say that Fisher Z was was John Watts under a group name. Was there any difference between the two, and what were your reasons for going under your own name now? I think it was, it was simply to show it was, I was doing something different. That, that, in hindsight, that's an odd thing to do because in this day and age, where you get bands like Eels, where he's I don't know what he's something something the third, isn't he? Fred Nurt the third, and so therefore they Eels is him. That's what he does. That's that's his brand name. And really, if you go back to it, I mean understanding more about marketing than I ever did before because I wasn't interested in it. The idea, if you like, the Fisher Z brand name is what I should have always worked on because it makes it clear. I'm, I move around to indicate I'm doing different projects. I just wanted to indicate this is not exactly the same as what I've been doing for the last three years. But I've now learned you can do that under one moniker. <laughs> People don't differentiate between the two. They see the word Fisher Z and they see me, so I, I don't care what they call it now. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, you were a, a three-piece with Dave Purdy and Derek Ballard. Yes. Um, how did you hook up with those two guys? Um, auditions, I think. Because originally, when I first decided I was going to do a solo record, apart from that EMI, were absolutely appalled. They wanted to make a lot of money out of another Fish Z record immediately. Um, I, I was working for a bit with Hugo Burnham from the Gang of Four playing drums and Richie Robertson from uh, Time with the Spoodles. And then we sort of, we had some fun, knocked around a few tunes, but then obviously they were doing their own things. And so I auditioned drummers and I auditioned bass players. Now, you obviously had your first solo album to promote. How did you sort of come to choose the set? How did you balance your new material with the old? Well, we used, I think, probably a lot more new material than most people would have done. People expected me to play a straight Fish Z set, as I recall. Yeah. And I obviously, I didn't do that. I, I did, um, I, I always, as a policy, um, play a lot of um, new material. I just think that the only obligation of a live act is to play what's good. It doesn't matter, you know, that, that's, yeah, absolutely, that's your obligation. So what, what I remember, I haven't got a track listing in front of me, what I remember, I, I would have done probably, oh, I don't know, at least, at least eight or nine of the new things, and I'd have probably slung in some of the things that they would recognize from um, Fishes at Era as well. Right, right. Now, the, I know there's a song on here that's a particular favorite of yours, One Voice, which you tend to play, you've tended to play pretty much um, throughout s since uh, since 82. Why was that song a particular p particular favorite of yours? Well, I think that, um, well, it, it was most, as in most things, 
things that you write or most things that you draw is just something that came out naturally as it was a kind of an, a bit of an anthem for the idea of being I am me rather than being I am a group but the, also also I mean with that song that the game it, it, it was had it had it been, had it come out under the official Ed moniker in 1982 it would have been a big hit but I didn't you know I, I like the idea of battering against the business to be honest there's a new generation the sick of blowing in the wind Um, and you decided not to use a keyboard player. Was there a particular reason? Did you like the freedom of a three-piece? Uh, no, I was making a point again, because um, on the Red Skies album, which is the last Fisher's Ed record, everybody said they liked the keyboards, and so I thought I wouldn't put them on this time. And they, what they didn't realise is the keyboard player on Red Skies of Paradise was me. They, they assumed <laughs> that I didn't want to use keyboards and I didn't want to use somebody else. I just didn't play many keyboards. I just had to keep it simpler. So... Obviously, you've uh, you've continued your career to today. You've um, you've moved into all kinds of different mediums, and uh, anybody who wants to look you up on the internet can uh, find out exactly Lots how stuff. how active you've been. Yes, I mean, how does the uh, the John Watts of today look back on uh, on the John Watts of thirty years ago? Do you you know? Do you recognise yourself? Do, do you are you happy with what you see? Um, when I look back on it, it's interesting. I, I, for ages, I hate the Celtic business. I just hate. And so many of the bands that are knocking about at the moment, they're, um, you know, older bands playing in second gear, playing the same old set over and over again. I've never wanted to do that. But I'm proud of the things that I did historically, both, you know, both the Under the Fisher's Head name and also the solo stuff. Looking back at it, you always have a more, I don't know, I've got more respect for it looking back at it. I just, just didn't look back 20 years. Now I look back at it now, yeah, it's good. If anybody comes to see uh, your show this year, for instance, if they went back and bought this 82 uh, DVD, then you'd be quite happy for them to uh, to see John Watts, the emerging solo star. Oh, no, yeah, sure, it's great. I mean, the thing that's very funny about the, about the internet, about films these days, is, for instance, my sons. I've got three daughters and two sons. Um, the, the daughter's friends, adult friends, they look at the internet and they look at, for instance, films, they look at things that have come out of the early Fisher's Ed films. And my son looks like me. People can't tell the difference between one ear or another. They said to the sisters, "Look, oh, you know, my son's, bit, you know, your, you know, your brother's uh, video is really good." And they said, "That's not my brother. That's my dad." The, 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 the internet merges everything together. It's very, very interesting. And if you, you know, obviously people can find you. So people who know who I am are probably would know. Looking back at '82, would see that. Other people come in. You know, you come in from nowhere, or they they, they see the songs, they recognise them. And they go back. Our audience now, the audience is, is getting so much younger year after year after year. 
I mean, we just we just played a big sold out show in Hamburg last night, and um, at that in that circumstances, I I think the the, the you know the um, oh, sort of dimension, what's it called? I don't know. The, the section of the audience has changed so radically. So a lot of the fans, you've got fans singing along with the well-known songs from the early part of my career, and they're like 20 or they're 17 and all the rest of it. So for them to look to look back, it's very odd. They can they can look back at history when I was playing to their parents at the same age, which I think is really funny. Absolutely, rock and roll, eh? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, John Watts. Thank you, mate.